Hi, I'm John Hunt, and today I'll be your Pewtersmith. I've been assembling a collection of computers from about 1982 to about 1992, and today we're going to be taking a look at an Apple IIc that I'm going to try to get working. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at this Apple IIc computer that I bought on eBay for a really cheap price because it is not working. I was able to get this whole setup for about $150 shipped, which is a great price. If this was in working order, it would probably have sold for $350 to $400. I especially love that it came with some of these original accessories. Now, this is a 1984 machine. This is one of the first ones of these, actually. It's a very low serial number one. It's got all of the original software discs in their original case. People sell just this pack of discs for about $50 on eBay. I've also got most of the original manuals. So we've got the system utilities manual, the Apple IIc manual, and the owner's guide. And I love it when the original manuals and documentation are with a machine. Like I mentioned though, this machine is not working. It starts up and just displays a pattern on the screen and then does nothing. It's typically a problem with the RAM chips in this computer. They weren't particularly robust and they may need partial replacement or complete replacement. And there's 16 of them. I used this computer for a summer when I was about 14 years old. I would go with my father to his job and in his office there was one of these computers that I programmed in basic with all day. So I'd really like to have one of these up and running and in my collection. Early in the computer startup it goes to clear the memory so that it can start normal operations. It's getting part of the way through that process running into some problems with those RAM chips and then dying. I think that if we change out those RAM chips, we might be in good shape. When Apple designed this computer, they made it super easy to service. Look at how easy that keyboard comes apart. It's just one connector and the disk drive is the same way, just lifts right out. And also the power supply, a nice edge card connector and you have full access to your board. I'm gonna to try to upgrade the ROM in it, which is what runs the overall operation of this computer. This is the chip we're gonna replace right here. And here are the 16 RAM chips, one of which at least I expect is the problem. And the reason we're gonna upgrade the ROM is because the early ROM that came with this very early Apple IIc doesn't have some of these advanced features like the built-in memory test. We want to upgrade it from the original 16K ROM, which is very tiny, up to the 32K ROM, which by modern standards is also very tiny. That's like, you know, barely a picture on a website. We need to tell it that we're changing its size. To do that, we're gonna solder a little spot on the board and we're gonna cut a little spot on the board. When Apple designed the board, they thought in the future they might need to do this upgrade and make the ROM bigger, so they already put it on the board, which is very convenient. So here's the ROM chip we're gonna replace, and here's the W1 that we're gonna cut, and here's the W2 we're gonna put a little blob of solder on. I'm gonna use my Weeha chip lifter here. Just work my way through. And there we go, pops out nice and easy. I purchased a replacement ROM for this machine on eBay. I could have programmed it myself. I do have the equipment to do it, but it was only 12 bucks and the chip itself's about four. So I figured I'd save the hassle to make sure it's the right version I needed. Because it's brand new, just need to bend it a little bit on that side and flip it over and bend it a little bit on this side. That just brings the pins into the right alignment for this socket. In order to install the chip, we have to make sure it's in the right orientation. Thankfully, they make that really easy. There's a little mark on the chip and there's also a little mark on the board. We can see right down there. For my soldering iron, I've got a Hako 936. It's an older soldering iron. I've also got a desoldering gun. That makes it super easy to unsolder components and it is a life changer if you have to work on old computers like this. Because trying to desolder ICs from a board is just painful. Here's our W2. Gonna just push some solder onto this board, get it going right there, and there we are. We're gonna switch to W1. So to cut this, we're gonna go right in the center, and I'm gonna go real slow, because there's another trace near it, and I don't wanna damage it. I think I've got it. I'm just gonna test now to make sure that we've actually cut it successfully. So I've got my multimeter set up here. We are successfully cut, so we're good to go. I'm just gonna check the W2 as well. It's not connected. I didn't get enough solder on there. That's why it's always good to check. I'm gonna put a little bit of flux on. It really makes the solder flow very nicely. And I'm really gonna ball it up, put quite a bit of solder down. To so we'll just check to make sure our continuity is good now. Okay, we're all set and ready to go. We get the same thing to start, that's okay. Let's try to put it into memory test mode now. Control closed Apple reset. 
Nope, well, they're not gonna make it easy on us. We're gonna have to diagnose the RAM chips independently. Normally when these RAM chips go bad, they put up a lot of interference on their data lines. And I can check that with this device right here, this oscilloscope, and they all look perfectly fine. It could be a problem where it's not that the chips are responding wrong, they're just not storing the data correctly. We're just gonna socket and replace all of these RAM chips one at a time. We can see that we have nice even ups and downs. This is perfectly fine. We've got a nice repeating pattern, nice high and low levels. But this one, it's a little more muddy. See how it's kind of like flopping around? And these logic levels are certainly good enough that it should work, but we're gonna go ahead and try to socket out this RAM anyway. Unfortunately, I don't have any of the correct size socket in stock. It's a 16 pin socket. The closest I have is these 18 pinners. I'm gonna see if I can cut one down to size. It's not the best solution. I tried to cut a few down to size, but it didn't work. But what I can do right now though, is I can desolder some of these RAM chips with my desoldering gun. So at least when the sockets come in, I'll be ready to go. Just gonna clean the tip in my little wire brush. And I'm gonna try one more thing before I start desoldering these RAM chips, which is to piggyback other RAM chips on top of them. If the chips are electrically okay, but they don't have good data integrity, we can piggyback a chip on by just placing it on top. So the first thing I wanna do, I'm just gonna make sure we're seeing this, the problem in the same way. What, what the fuck? It's working. It's actually running the factory self-test. If they don't have the keyboard connected, they drop into this continuous self-test mode to make sure that the computer motherboards were working correctly before they were fully assembled. Either over on the bench while I was testing and poking at stuff, I reconnected something that was not firmly connected, or there's a problem with the keyboard. So that's the next thing to check. You can hear that little beep sequence it just did. That means you could disconnect it and move on to test the next unit. So the next thing we have to figure out is which one of those it is, and we do that by hooking up the keyboard. Let's power her on with the keyboard attached. And look at that, she's alive and running. I'm gonna put in one of the original included software discs, which is a disc of uh, games. There may be a problem with the disc drive. I'm just gonna use my disc cleaning kit. This is a old kit from the 80s. Just put a little bit of the solution on. Just gonna let it spin a little bit on that. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like this 2C has some kind of issue with its floppy drive that I'll have to address. What I've got here is a floppy emu. I bought this online for about $100. It emulates all of the drives in the Apple II line, so we can test it out to make sure the system's fully working. And there's our game. This is one of the best games, arguably, for the Apple II series, in which you play a helicopter pilot and you have to pick up survivors. So I'm not 100% sure what we actually did to fix this computer. I think it was that when I was testing signals, I had to move the CPU around a little to get access to all of them. It may have been just a little bit of corrosion in the socket that was the problem there, but that's just really a guess. Either way, I'm really pleased that this computer is working. I'm gonna order a replacement disk drive, and this thing will be completely good to go.